Hi guys, David here with another science update. So today the first article that I want to look at is called Graphene, Miracle Material Singled Out for COVID Conspiracies. And though I'm not particularly into COVID conspiracies, I thought that in reading this article it occurred to me that maybe it would be useful for people to bring out three reasons why I think that COVID-19 vaccines are not being used for mind control. So before we get into these particular reasons, I think we should maybe do a very quick overview of what graphene is. So graphene is described as a single layer of carbon atoms that are bound together by overlapping hybrid bonds. Basically, it's made by taking graphite, which is a well-known material, it's in your pencil, uh, and taking it apart layer by layer. And if you isolate these layers of graphite into graphene, it has some amazing properties. And you can see that molecular images of it look like this very interesting one-dimensional or very flat lattice structure. That's kind of what graphene is. And so graphene is known to have a lot of amazing properties. It's strong, it's tough, it's more flexible than carbon fiber. Mostly it's known because it's very conductive, so it has high heat conductivity and high electrical conductivity. And um, unlike a lot of really fancy high-tech materials, it's made of pure carbon like graphite, so it's actually considered quite eco-friendly. And what you might notice is missing from this list is uh, mind control or even just ability to affect neural functions. I want to bring this out as reason number three that graphene in vaccines is not being used for mind control is that Graphene, while it is a really amazing material, it doesn't actually have any mind control properties. And I actually know uh, some number of people who publish in the graphene literature space as a scientist, and I can promise you that if they had found that there was some connection between neurological function and graphene, they would have published that because basically sci scientists want to get their papers published and they want to get them cited. That means other people are reading them and referring to their papers. And if you publish something new on graphene, like something really novel, you're gonna get a lot of citations. So the fact that mind control is not a property of graphene is probably a pretty good indication that it's not being used in mind control for COVID-19 vaccines. As has been the case with 5G and microchip technology, graphene has been the subject of several Trojan horse conspiracy theories according to which governments or powerful individuals are supposedly seeking to remotely control people who receive some sort of mini device through coronavirus vaccines or track their whereabouts through GPS. So the second reason that I think that graphene in COVID-19 vaccines is not being used to mind control or track people is because we already have technology for that. Uh, for tracking people, we have smartphones, and for mind control, we have social media. So there's not really any need to inject people with a new high-tech version of mind control or tracking. And the main reason that graphene in COVID-19 vaccines is not causing mind control is that the COVID-19 vaccines don't have any graphene in them. In fact, the entire ingredient lists for the vaccines have been published and also tested by outside parties, and they were found to not contain any graphene or graphene oxide or anything along those lines. So really from that perspective, this video could really have been one sentence long, but I wanted to take a couple minutes just to talk about graphene and kind of clear up its reputation because it's a phenomenal material. And thinking about just what an amazing material graphene is, it got me thinking about, well, why is graphene being singled out and sort of uh, vilified in this way? The fact that from, from my point of view, graphene is just an interesting material that, I'm, um, that people are studying and some people have probably hyped up too much, to be honest. Like, it's a very interesting material, but I don't think it's going to... I don't think it's really going to save the world or anything like that. But if you don't know anything about chemistry or physics, then it could just mean anything. It could do anything as far as you're concerned. Yeah, graphene could just like control your mind. But it's if you're looking at it, it's just it's just a layer of atoms. How is a layer of atoms going to control your mind? You would need some kind of crazy uh, microchip and even that couldn't control your mind because how are you going to integrate that with your neural circuitry? You know, it just it just makes no sense. It's implausible. But anyway, if you're looking for ways to improve your science literacy, uh, I recommend that you consider 
subscribing to my channel because we talk about the most interesting science of the day almost every day. So moving on, the other article that I wanted to talk about today is about astronomy and it's called Mini Psyches Give Insight into Mysterious Metal-Rich Near-Earth Asteroids. And the point of this article in particular is talking about asteroids that are relatively near Earth but have very, very high heavy metal content like iron, nickel, and cobalt. And in talking about these asteroids, they're particularly addressing the idea that someday asteroids like this could actually be a source for mining in outer space. The paper also explored the mining potential of 1986-DA and found that the amount of iron, nickel, and cobalt that could be present on the asteroid would exceed the global reserves of these metals. So if you think about a future in which we're, um, you know, doing manufacturing in space, perhaps we're building interstellar spacecraft, or maybe we're just having an economy in the solar system, then the idea that you could just fly up to an asteroid like this and have a source of massive amounts of useful metals like iron, nickel, and cobalt is really interesting. I think it's something that, it's, it's a small detail, apparently, but I think that it really brings to life the possibility that we'll someday have a thriving economy in, uh, in outer space. So I thought that was an interesting article, and I've linked it below if you want to read more about it. Well, anyway, thanks again so much for joining me in this episode of Almost Daily Science. I hope you'll join me again in the future.